But and when you start do. openly becoming hostile to Islam and the Muslims and your actions now are bringing real world ramifications and harm upon the Muslims and people are going to be killed because of your agitation and your statements. Right? The outlook towards you now is going to completely change. Look, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck and it acts like a duck, then it's a duck. It doesn't matter how, how, how much you proclaim that I'm a Muslim or you tweet Alhamdulillah or Quran verses. We're going to judge you, judge you based upon your actions more than your statements. Sayyidina Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Now, the situation uh, for the Muslims in the, in the UK is becoming very dire. Now, <clears throat> about, I think now, one week ago, there was a stabbing and three children were killed. I think it was in what, a suburb called Southport in the UK. And there was a massive reaction to this. And initially, social media was spreading the news that it was a Muslim teen that went out, a terrorist attack that stabbed uh, these three uh, British children and injured some others. Now, later on, the news came out uh, that it was actually, wasn't a Muslim and the person was actually Christian. But by this time, the damage had been done and there was an enormous mobilization and reaction by the far-right movements across Europe and specifically in the UK. And then in reaction to that, mass protests and mass rioting is occurring now in the UK and all these far-right movements have mobilized thugs and they're attacking Muslim neighborhoods, they're attacking uh, mosques, they're attacking random Muslims on the street, even attacking black people. Yeah! Oh, yeah! And this has all been instigated by uh, far-right, uh, patriotic, nationalistic um, personalities such as Tony Robinson. And not surprisingly, someone that's playing a huge role in this agitation and ins this instigation of this fa these far-right mobs is Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate anymore. Look, Andrew Tate in, in, in the previous weeks, uh, he's been causing a lot of controversy uh, amongst the Muslims and he's been making many problematic statements, even kufri statements. And some have made takfir of him. And if you're a scholar um, and you've established the hujjah upon him, then that's your right to make takfir of him. And even though he's been a Muslim now, I think for been a year, Muslim for about a year or so, um, he's made many problem, problematic statements. And he's even his lifestyle, his whole lifestyle is, is, is un-Islamic. But it's one thing when you say things as a new Muslim that are problematic or even kufri, and you still live an un-Islamic un, un lifestyle. The harm mostly is to yourself. And your religion but when you start openly becoming hostile to islam and the muslims and your actions now are bringing real world ramifications and harm upon the muslims and people are going to be killed because of your agitation and your statements right? the outlook towards you now is going to completely change look if it walks like a duck if it quacks like a duck and it acts like a duck then it's a duck it doesn't matter how, how, how much you proclaim that I'm a Muslim or you tweet Alhamdulillah or Quran verses. We're going to judge you, judge you based upon your actions more than your statements. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very clear on this issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattakhidu al-yahuda wa al-nasara awliya, ba'duhum awliya u ba'd, wa man yatawallahum minkum fa innahu minhum, inna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-zalimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clear verses. Uh, you who believe, do not take the disbelievers as your allies besides the believers. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ And whoever allies with them from amongst you, فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Then he is from amongst them. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we take the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're going to judge you according to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now look, um, many uh, social media accounts feel vindicated. And they've come out and said, we, we told you Muslims and in the previous weeks, even before um, his latest 
um, problematic statements. They'd be saying, we, we warned you Muslims and we told you he's not sincere and he's just using Islam uh, for the publicity and, and for money and there's all these other theories and you were fooled. There's nothing to do with that. No, we weren't fooled. Right? When somebody, Islam tells us, if somebody, a new Muslim comes and says, look, I'm a Muslim. What do we turn around and say, now you're a kafir? Now we reject you? You're just using Islam and Muslims? We're going to take you Right? At face value. We don't know your intentions. They're between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we're going to accept you as a Muslim. That's what Islam demands. And now, when you're a new Muslim, there's some leeway given because there's much you don't know about Islam, especially in today's environment. You need to learn. You need to start change your whole lifestyle. So even though you make some problematic statements and you do some un-Islamic things or you haven't changed your lifestyle completely, it can still be overlooked and forgiven a bit. And if you make mistakes, then... And, and Muslims were, uh, online accounts were, we're going to call you out, look, this is a mistake, be careful of this, this is kufr. But that only, it's not because we're fooled by you, but that's what Islam demands, and you're given that leeway as a new convert to Islam, especially where, where he lives in Romania, I mean, uh, he was in jail, and he couldn't really leave Romania. Right? But over time now, you're not changing your actions, we don't see you learning Islam, we don't see you actually saying anything Islamic, you have lifestyle is un-Islamic, right? So we're going to judge you now accordingly. And as I said, um, all that, when you do these kinds of things as a new Muslim, even if you say kufri things, that's between you and Allah. The harm is between you and Allah. Even your deviant views, unless, and we know some Muslims, some young Muslim youth were, were fooled by all his uh, ideas about masculinity and they followed him in that. Yes, it caused some harm. And of course, the Muslims, there was a huge reaction to him becoming a Muslim, not because we're being fooled, but naturally when you're that popular and you're bringing all this attention to Islam, the Muslims are going to react accordingly. But when now you're becoming openly hostile to Islam and the Muslims, and you're making all these statements to instigate Europe and the non-Muslim populations against the Muslims, right? this is on a whole other level. It's not now just about overlooking some problematic statements or you've committed uh, some kufri statements. Right? No, no, this is bringing real world harm upon Islam and the Muslims. And he's made a lot of tweets in one tweet, um, in reaction to what happened, those stabbings at Southport, he put a, put a photo of a, a, a Bangladeshi. It looks like a Bangladeshi because he remember that famous video that went viral about him where he was talking about Pakis and Bangladeshis and they're invading uh, Europe and invading England. And then he puts up this picture of a, a Bangladeshi in a, in a lifeboat and holding a knife, all right, with all the connotations that comes with. And then he's making like, directly instigates through his statement saying, one tweet he says, the British government hates white people so much they only punish rioters when they're white. Even if the discontent was sparked by the murder of little girls, white people, your nations are occupied, you are second class citizens. So he's made many of these statements in videos and in tweets, building this narrative. You white Europeans, you're invaded by all these Pakis and uh, Muslims and uh, Bangladeshis and these are people from third world countries and they have a different religion to you and um, they're not cultured and, and they're violent and, and, and rude. They're invading your lands. They're not doing anything to invade your lands and the government is allowing all of this to happen. So him and many others that are, are, are tweeting out these messages are the ones that are responsible for instigating what we're seeing in the last few days in Britain, where there's been mass rioting, mobilization of the right-wing movements. And now, they're openly attacking Muslims. They're going around to Muslim neighborhoods. They're, they're, they're trying to kill people. Right? And sooner or later, we expect some Muslims are going to be killed. So your actions now, you're allying yourself with these far-right movements against Islam and the Muslims. And you're instigating and agitating these far-right movements to harm Islam and to harm Muslims. So now we don't care about your statements anymore. Your actions tell us that you are an enemy of Islam and the Muslims. Whoever allies themselves with them, then he is from amongst them. And we don't care about your statements anymore. And you're going to be treated accordingly. You know, what's uh, incredibly um, amazing about all of this is Andrew Tate presents, presents himself as this intellectual He's playing 4D chess. Uh, he's, he's warning people about the matrix and, and, and he's trying to uh, cut, off, cut off that link and opens people's eyes to what the governments are doing all right, uh, around the world and what they're doing to their populations and the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Right. Andrew Tate, you're not as intelligent as you think you are. Right. What it's actually becoming clear is that you know, you're more of a con man than actually someone that intelligent. Right. Even at face value, your statements seem very intelligent right. and you're very well spoken. But you keep exposing yourself with the statements that you're making and the positions that you hold. For someone that seems himself so intelligent and working against the matrix, 
for you to adopt this narrative because look let me just you know today what, what's happening what, why is this whole agitation agitation even occurring the, the the cause of this whole issue is not immigration it's not far right uh, movement right the cause of this whole issue is that we live under capitalist societies and what happens under capitalist societies greed is their religion corporations rule these countries and their only uh, their only intention and their only objective is to make more profit and they use politicians they use government right for this purpose and really the politi political class and the rich elite class they're the same people right? so over time right, the system it's making the rich richer and the poor poorer it's spending less on healthcare it's spending less on roads less on infrastructure less on hospitals it's given uh, more corporate tax cuts, more corporate subsidies. It bails them out every time there's a financial crisis. The bankers are bailed out, right? It allows uh, all the big oil companies to get into all the natural resources and, and make uh, billions of dollars of profits out of them. So over time, okay, people are suffering. People are agitated. Their livelihood is changing. Yes, the cost of living is out of control. They can't afford homes. They can't buy homes. They can't rent homes. There aren't even enough homes to buy or to rent. Electricity is out of control. You can't afford food. You can't afford clothing. This is what the system creates. Now, what does the system do uh, to uh, uh, so to make sure that it doesn't cop the blame? Right? It has to cause misdirection, point you in another direction. Because if people find out what the actual reason, uh, the actual true cause of all of this is, they're going to turn their attention towards that system and start asking why is this? Why is the political class and the rich elite class why they're together? So what to, what does it do? It, it has to misdirect right create an illusion so the scapegoat is always the other all, all all civilizations all governments do this it has to create a scapegoat for you for you all right to point the the blame on something else instead of you focusing on it so what do they do today right it's immigration it's it's the muslims right? it's all these people coming from the third world countries they're the problem that's why you're so poor that's why you can't afford housing that's why electricity is out of control and look to be fair um Yes, immigration is a problem, but not how you think. Why these lands are big enough and have more than enough resources to house all these people. But what happens? Because these rich corporate elites and these, all these big corporations and companies to fuel their industry and to fuel their profits and to grow their businesses, they need workers. And because the population, the white people are not breeding enough, their population numbers are in decline, they're living individualistic lifestyles and they don't want to breed. Okay, so there's no new generation to put into these factories and into these offices. So what do they do? They need manpower. So they bring across manpower. That's where immigration comes into it. You get cheap labor right, to continue um, expanding your businesses and expanding your, your, your corporations and your profits. But at the same time, what are you doing? You're, you're not building infrastructure. You're not making more roads. You're not building more housing. You're not updating the hospital system. You're not making more hospital beds. You're not updating the, the whole uh, medical infrastructure. So what happens? Yes, you got a flood of all these immigrants and all these people, and the infrastructure can't keep up with that. So now you have more demand and there is supply, and this is what causes everything to skyrocket. So immigration is a problem, but not because it, it, itself is the issue. The issue is the system. It won't spend the money. It won't upgrade the infrastructure. At the same time, it wants to build more profits, bigger corporations, right? And then you have this enormous issue that we are all uh, suffering from in these countries. So then what do you do? Yes, you scapegoat. Look, the migrants are the problems. They're, they're causing this whole issue. If there wasn't migration, then we wouldn't have this cost of living crisis. Right? We wouldn't have all this crime. So Andrew Tate, right? Uh, for someone that thinks you're against the matrix and you're, you're, you're warning people about the matrix, you are actually a tool of the matrix because you've, you've uh, adopted the exact narrative that they want. They want attention to be on immigration. They want attention to be on Muslims, to use them as a scapegoat, to divert away, to divert people away from the actual real cause of the problem, which is the system itself, the capitalist elite, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, right? where there's... They, they steal all the wealth and they steal all the resources and they refuse to spend, actually spend money on the country, spend money on housing, spend money on healthcare, spend money on medical care. For someone that think, considers themselves so intelligent, you are actually a tool of that matrix that you think you're warning people against. And that's what makes it even worse for you. To all the Muslims out there, right, 
um, living in living in the West. Uh, you have to understand that we're living in really uncharted territory. And things are never going to be the same as they were before. And it's clear if you look across Europe, America, all these Western countries, right, we're heading down a particular direction. Right? More and more, um, these nationalist far-right movements uh, are growing in voice. They're being agitated by people like Tony Robinson, uh, Tommy Robinson, by people like Andrew Tate. Right? And the worse the cost of living crisis is getting, the more the attention is being turned on Islam and the Muslims and to a lesser extent other migrants from other countries. But you are going to be the scapegoat and life is only get, going to get tougher from here onwards. Now, how bad is it going to get? Is it just a, a wave and, and uh, we're just seeing some um, uh, like a, uh, a letting out of some smoke and anger and then it's going to quieten down again, okay? Or is it just going to, you know, this agitation is just going to continue. It's only going to get worse and worse and it's going to amplify until things become, uh, it becomes unlivable for Muslims, Allahu Alam. Right? No, nobody can pinpoint exactly and foresee what's going to happen. But in general, if you look at the trends throughout Europe, France, right, UK, you can see it's heading down this direction where it's becoming uh, more openly hostile towards Islam uh, and the Muslims. Now, sometimes, like for example, here in Australia, uh, we had um, we had something called the Cronulla Riot. It's infamous now, where like in the UK, uh, white Australians took to the streets and they just there was rioting and they were just going through the street bashing up uh, Muslims and uh, people that d didn't look white Australian. Right? And that caused an enormous stir here in Australia and there was a reaction from the Muslim community towards that. Right? But Alhamdulillah, it died down and we haven't seen anything like that since. Right? So who knows how it plays out in all of these countries. Right? But as I said, the signs are it's, it's just becoming more and more hostile. It just depends on how bad it gets. It takes a, lot, a bit longer or it's just going to amplify really quickly uh, in the next coming years. In any case, as I always say on my channel, we have to look to the seerah of the messenger, so I tell him his life, right, to, to have an understanding of how things play out. What are the patterns in societies, in history? And these patterns are always the same. Then the messenger, sallam, when he lived amongst the people of Makkah, he was a similar situation to many Muslims living in the West. Him and their companions, they were a small minority group, right, and the larger population were polytheists, mushrikeen, non-Muslim, and they held the reins of power. And they held the authority and the lawmaking. Right. And as the Muslims, as the Prophet ﷺ openly uh, called to Islam, and he attacked their way of life and attacked their shirk and called against their kufr, and Allah ﷻ revealed the verses to him, the more the Prophet ﷺ called out against their kufr and called to Islam, the more hostile they were towards Islam and the Muslims. And so this went through stages. We know initially there was a bit of an individual phase. Prophet ﷺ was speaking to people individually and they tolerated him. There wasn't really any violence towards him. Once he became more public and open in, in the da'wah and in Islam and once more personalities such as Hamza and Umar became Muslims, okay, they beca started becoming more hostile, more violent, ridiculing him, calling him a liar, right? then physically abusing him and attacking him, trying to choke him, trying to kill him, uh, Abusing the companions. Some companions by their families, they were, they were locked up in their homes, not allowed to leave. Others were tortured to leave their Islam, like Khabab and Bilal. Others were martyred and killed, like the family of Ammar ibn Yasir. Until we know the famous incident where uh, for three years, they were actually like, you know, people use this word concentration camp, the Muslims were boycotted. And for three years, Prophet ﷺ and, and, and the Muslims and his tribe, they were completely boycotted and cut off from the rest of Makkah and they were left. Nobody can deal with them. Nobody can feed them. They're not allowed, uh, you're not allowed to marry from them. And they completely cut them off and secluded them and they were starving to death. And eventually, Quraysh said, we've had enough of the Prophet and the Muslims and we're going to assassinate the Prophet And that's when we know the migration, when it became that hostile, the migration happened to Medina and he set up the Islamic State. So this is just history. So be aware of the seerah. And these are the laws of society. This is, this is what happens. When you're living as Muslims, you're living in non-Muslim societies, right? this is the trend to what happened to the Messenger وسلم, Eventually, they were completely, Quraysh were completely hostile to the Messenger and hostile to the companions and even though they were indigenous to Mecca. And then they wanted to kill the Prophet وسلم, and or end Islam completely. Right? So, I'm not saying that it's, it's panic stations. I'm not saying the whole world is going to collapse on us here living in the West, all right? There's still some good people, and there's, I've seen in the UK recently, um, even uh, the white Christians, they're, they're pushing back against these far-right nationalist movements, right? But in general, this is the trend of history, and as Muslims, you just, you just need to be aware, understand what's happening, learn from the lessons of the Prophet and we can learn from the Prophet his actions and his reaction and the companions how to deal with all of this. Even when things are openly hostile against you, you try your best, to prepare your family, teach them Islam correctly, 
make them understand what's going to happen and give them the iman to be able to withstand this pressure and you continue upon your path of calling people to Islam, calling against the kufr system and openly proclaiming the truth. Right? And this is all that we can do. And in the end, your rewards are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you can put yourself in a better position or leave somewhere else, then by all means, you know, if you have that capability, then you should do that. Absolutely. Right? But we just need to be aware and be prepared. This is the direction now in the West where things are heading. Right? As the, this capitalist system, uh, as it causes more problems, right? and as the populations internally start to suffer, instead of instead of the uh, uh, the attention being brought down upon the system and all the issues that it's causing, they're going to divert that blame onto Islam, onto the Muslims, and onto immigrants. And that's why you're going to be facing uh, a more hostile society and more hostile environments. And people like Andrew Tate and others, they are all adding to this narrative and they're instigating against an Islam and the Muslims. And when you do that, then you're going to be treated as an Islam and the, as an enemy of Islam and Muslims. And we don't need your Islam and we don't want you. Zakum uh, khairan. Please like the video. Please comment. Uh, please share uh, this content because uh, YouTube is, is heavily shadow banning my account. So whoever watches this and you enjoy it, please um, share it as, as widely as possible. And please subscribe to the channel.